Thank you, man. <coughs> okay. So, we have been discussing since morning the coming up of Euro 6 or BS6 in 2020 and industry getting prepared. We had some experience in BS4 of exhaust after treatment systems and we had some experience on SCR, very little. But there is an element which we call as DPF, which India has never had an experience. And so, when I interact with uh, various OEMs, issues are raised how the DPF regeneration will be handled in the Indian context, whether the experiences from abroad will be translated and provide solutions to us or there is a need to do some thinking in this area. And as a consultant, I thought I can share with you the latest developments in DPF regeneration which are being talked about. Not that everything I have done with my own hands, but I have been associated with those great companies uh, who work in this direction. So, let me start doing. Uh, the presentation and as we move on, we will see who contributes what in the process. So, the outline of my presentation is, I will talk about uh, BS6 after treatment and likely solutions which are uh, available in Europe and US and likely to happen in India as well. And then choice of SCR also plays a very big role in our decision whether it is going to be vanadium or the zeolites and how the thermal management is important for that issue. And then we come to the DPF regeneration. So, this background of three previous topics which are listed here is as important as to understand how the DPF regeneration will be done. And when I come to the DPF regeneration, I will talk about what is the conventional approach in the industry and that there is a innovation which uh, Mr. Ben has introduced uh, IVHCO uh, who holds the patent for the school particulate regeneration. I was supposed to do the whole presentation and I have borrowed slides from him, Mr. Brett uh, to talk about the subject and then requested him that why do not you come over yourself and I am glad that he is with us. So, that part of my presentation I will leave, before that I will cover, rest I will ask him to do on this presentation. So, I personally believe that there will be three options which can be considered by us and one option is most common system seen in generation 1 Euro 6 engines which uses a high PGM DOC and the DPF and geolite based SCR and ASC. And the temperatures can go, maximum temperatures can go very high here. Because it is an active regeneration, high temperature regeneration and very suitable for long fall and also in some cases for R1. There is another solution which or the other option where the regeneration can be done at low temperatures. You have certain advantages here, but then to make it happen in the most effective way, you have to have low temperature regeneration with combination with vanadium SCR and there are a lot of technologies here which are involved. Uh, we will discuss it, how the thermal regeneration low temperatures can be done. And then I believe there is a third option on which the uh, presentation will cover today, which is in a way falls into the naturally occurring temperatures in the system which are low temperatures, a sort of an, a passive regeneration scenario. But then here you do not uh, regenerate DPF by any uh, thermal waves, it is a pressure pulse regeneration which is used here. So, basically it is a cooled particulate regeneration CPR technology based on pressure pulse regeneration that is you do not burn the suit, you dislodge the suit the way it gets lost onto the DPF, you make the reverse pulse flow and you dislodge it. 
So, it comes out to be very economical in terms of fuel economy because you do not add any heat, you do not burn fuel on that account. I must acknowledge in the beginning that the data used in this presentation, the thermal management low temperature pulse regeneration which I will be talking is with courtesy of the top so Denmark for whom I am the technical advisor and privy to some of the information. And of course, the cold particle regeneration data here is courtesy great. So, when we are talking about the generation Euro 2 and Euro and generation 1 Euro 6, sorry, generation 1 Euro 6 and generation 2 Euro 6, the difference was the choice of the SCR. And if you look at this chart, uh, this talks about the Scania system, which is a non EGR engine, low temperature regeneration, it is a passive regeneration with a vanadium SCR and you have the best fuel economy and the least urea consumption with this. So, you the second best in the series is uh, a man engine which is again a which is a easier engine or also a vanadium SCR and these two engines are most uh, you know efficient in terms of CO2 and BSF, BSFC and the urea cost is also almost 4.6 percent lower fluid cost that they use when you take urea cost of 30 percent of the diesel for calculations. Now, one that the fuel economy advantage with SCR we have seen because the low temperature regeneration is, helps that. They, when we talk about greenhouse gas focus in future, that is beyond Euro 6 and EPA 2010, there are targets coming up for heavy duty vehicle CO2 emission targets, 60 percent to be reduced by 2050 from the baseline of 1990 and there is a upcoming legislation on N2O in the EPA. Now, N2O emissions higher than 136 milligram per kilowatt hour results in CO2 equivalent penalties. This is what new legislation is talked about and N2O is equal to 0 corresponds to approximately 2.5 percent in CO2 reduction. So, if you reduce N2O, you also get, uh, you know, if you falter on that, you get penalties. If you get uh, low N N2O, you get the reward. So, focus for development of future power trip platforms will also, besides uh, lowering fuel consumption as focus, will also concentrate in terms of N2O simultaneously. And this will have an impact on selection of SCR catalyst in future. That's why we believe because force that. Say when you use a vanadium SCR, this makes less uh, N2O, almost 50 percent less N2O for typical Euro 6 engine. And this for high NOx engines, it really makes a lot of difference. For a typical 12 liter non EGR starting with 10 gram NOx and a vanadium catalyst, uh, this is the data from Halda Top. So, they demonstrated that ultra low NOx can be achieved and 50, 65 milligram N2O can be achieved. The non EGR engine with low temperature after treatment based around vanadium SCR therefore has the lowest cost, lowest cost both regarding operating and acquisition costs. Then we also have to see that what else technologies can be in terms of regeneration. Low temperature is one which can be applied to vanadium. The innovative CR technology, CPR technology which we will be talking today, they are also because you do not add temperatures to the system or you generate on the naturally occurring temperatures, you can have a vanadium SCR very compatible with uh, CPR technology. I think a little brief on thermal management before I uh, get into the subject of uh, DPF regeneration. So, we have seen that all uh, all over we hear that you know Indian driving cycles will have uh, very low temperatures, which is very true. We have a very low driving speeds in a city like Bangalore, we have reached uh, uh, 12 kilometer per hour, maybe a bullock cart stays the speed, uh, that sort of thing. So, in IT we go uh, touch the sky, but in this speed we are bullock cart. Anyway, so, the temperatures are going to blow, it is a reality in India, but even in WHTC cycle, 
there are areas where you have to stop urea dosing so to qualify a wstc even for any type of um, scr system in choice you cannot do it without any thermal management for the engine you have to have otherwise you will fail if you don't do a thermal management uh, in the wst cycle you will get very high nox as the temperatures uh, are low and you have to stop the urea dosing the moment you bring some sort of uh, thermal management for example an exhaust uh, throttling uh, which you can do only during motoring and idling without really affecting the performance of the engine from that point of view uh, you can bring down your nox levels very uh, low so a sort of thermal management with, uh, with the minimum int interventions minimum interference in the working of the engine is called for in euro 6 so that this brings to me a topic because in any case some thermal management you will do now the question is how do we take advantage into the dpf regeneration of that situation so i'll talk here two things conventional and the innovation when i come to the innovation i'll hand over the dais to mr brett to talk about uh, cold particulate regeneration say we know this that you know suit builds up in dpf which is dependent on many factors how you spend the time in idling and how you spent on low temperatures and high temperatures and what was the content of nox and no2 because some passive regeneration will keep happening all the time so conventional dpf regeneration is basically two things you have passive which is no2 driven low temperature regeneration or active o2 driven which is high temperature regeneration where you deliberately do fuel dosing before dc doc so there are no innovative approaches within the low temperature and within the normal happening that is cool particle regeneration and there is a pulse temperature driven which is which many people call as assisted passive uh, category so limit scr inlet temperatures to below 500 degree c peak that means a vanadium scr attrition does not happen and then you have a partial no2 based regeneration and only you do intermittent diesel dosing so most of the time you depend on no2 and sometimes you bring in uh, oxygen and then of course there is a cpr technology which is pulse pressure regeneration there only physical dislodging of soot from dpf in reversal pressure pulse so while do dosing diesel to increase the temperature this is desirable when the low driving temperatures happen but then one has to mind that there is a no2 production on doc which is inhibited so you will you will have to find a balance in a pulse temperature regeneration of intermittent dosing and balance the two inputs available to for regeneration so if we exploit no2 production over doc we will help lowering the dpf regeneration temperature below 550 and this is possible so this is uh, some experiments done there is a delta pressure drop uh, across the dpf and how, when you regenerate it you know you get this type of pulses on pressure and which is indicative of uh, how the temperature was fluctuating so diesel dosing periodically stopped so every time you reach this point you do uh, inject and uh, Uh, when it comes down goes up and like this so peak filter inlet temperature similar to high temperature case but not sustained so you get into the peak temperatures which are as good as in any active regeneration but they are not sustained they are break up uh, in terms of pulses and then you are able to clean filter quite a good 0.2 grams per liter left only and then diesel consumption from active to a pulse you have a reduction of almost 50% on the diesel consumption on account of uh, you know the limits the diesel consumed for regeneration which is more than 50% you get the reduction and the, then of course you can do with external acid dosing or post injection you can bring into the strategy uh, which uh, any catalyst supplier on vanadium can build for you an experimental indications and as an oem you can built in with your ems systems 
and it's possible to lower the PGM loading uh, using vanadium systems. So I think with this, I request uh, Mr. Bradley to come. Dr. Sharma, appreciate your introduction, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, I'd like to go into the cool particulate regeneration that Dr. Sharma touched on, which ultimately is a new and innovative solution. I presented this a few times. Uh, last was at the SAE uh, and uh, last year, 2015. And as you can see on there, they, if you would like to see a little bit more details, you could look at the paper that's on the bottom of this page. Overall, the uh, you know as we were, it was option three on Dr. Sharma's slides, but I believe that it's really and truly the India solution and that one of also developing markets, which is the ability to have a low cost solution, one where the engine and the after treatment are all to the point where their implementation of Euro six is possible. As we'll see here, as we go through that the vanadium uh, catalyzed DPF filter is the proposed solution and that we will uh, be discussing. Overall, the key to this is that if you can, we all know the lean NOx to PM trade-off and really the ultimate is to say that if you can get, you know, that's kind of switched to a NOx to efficiency occur. If you can get achieve an efficient regeneration of the particulate matter, it really changes everything. Because then you, the, the whole desires, most of the work that's been done on engine work has high injection pressure, for example, has all been about trying to achieve low PM. So we'll go through a little bit of uh, why CPR is needed in India, go through the fundamentals some earlier generator testing along with the third generation Jetta work that we believe this is the a, a potential solution for Volkswagen and then a summary. Overall when it comes to India's need for CPR for starters we need to see some blue skies here. <laughs> Been here a few days and uh, surprised that of how the haze. I think that we were, you know, many of the discussions today have been discussing about how this will be 10 years before we really see an, a result, a difference in India's pollution content. I believe that what we need, once again, is a solution that is low cost that will allow us to move forward rather rapidly along with retrofitting. Overall, the Euro 6 emissions with a low cost engine and after treatment, when I mean low cost, I'm thinking Euro 3 engine is as a starting mechanical injection system, or even Euro 2, capable of dense urban environment where we are low temperatures, along with being able to really achieve Euro, uh, Euro 6 emissions. You know, we've also heard in the presentations today about the fact that it'll be challenging to achieve low NOx at these low temperatures. And so I think that ultimately, as Dr. Sherman had stated, a new approach is needed to achieve these levels. One that also doesn't require a little sulfur diesel fuel. I think, believe that if we can get to the point where we can have 50 ppm or 500 ppm, that it'll be a much better solution for India and will make it so that it's a, a technology for all developing countries outside of India. Along with improved fuel economy by removing the incineration, the fact that we're spending, you know, significant amounts of fuel to heat up kilograms of material to remove grams of particulate is a something that just needs to be changed. Overall class leading acceleration and drivability. When we can go to a solution that can produce particulate, then you can go to a, a rich conditions. You can go to utilizing all the oxygen in there and making it for allowing you to go to very fast accelerations. Once again, retrofit. You know, the solution needs to be independent of the engine, something that does not require a electronic controls of it. Our solution is something that's completely mechanical. And when we applied it to engines, the engine did not even know that it existed on there. It just had low particulate output. 
A reduction overall of the ash. If we can remove the ash while we're removing the particulate, then that is a $6 billion projected uh, area. changed. If you look at it from a, looking at just one channel, and I apologize, we'll probably run a little bit over here, but the when you look at the individual channel of a particulate filter, what we have right now is the soot cake that's formed, uh, as we know, and then what we're going to show in the next slide is those part two, which is the pressurization of the system, which is depicted as green so that we don't infer it as being high temperature. And thirdly, we do a back flush by opening a valve upstream of the particulate filter, allowing for the physical dislodging. This is an overall uh, cartoon, shall we say, animation of that this approach, which is to, as we were showing there, the actual buildup of the particulate matter. Right now, there's already in the Volkswagen and a lot of other uh, approaches from thermal management that there's a valve downstream of the filter already being used. We've, we utilized it in the Volkswagen, and we can use it in others. By closing that valve, we can pressurize the system, utilizing the wonderful positive displacement pump actions of a, of a diesel engine. At the point in time, we've uh, done some innovations where the valve then, regeneration valve, is actuated mechanically and s with another very simple approach. By opening up the two chambers, you had the, before, you had the high pressure and then the low pressure on the other side, which is near ambient. The opening up of the valve rapidly allows for the back flush, the driving force to, of the flow back into the storage volume. And then the, the holding of that until the oil change interval. The valve shuts, the other valve opens, pressure decays. All of this takes only seconds to occur instead of 10 to 30 minutes. In fact, the two uh, the ones we approach were 2.3 seconds and 1.8 seconds. So on average. So as you can see, when you have an order of magnitude of reduction in that, you can all higher particulate matter emit emitting engines do is require more regenerations to occur. The overall, the system then decays also in the storage volume until the point where it's ready for another regeneration. And as you can see here, we're depicting this as being the vanadium catalyst, which, and we're also proposing that we remove the DOC. Uh, certainly, there's no reason that, that this system would not be able to have a DOC and operate in, in the same way that Dr. Sharma is showing for the others. But we, we can see here that there's advantages of potentially removing the DOC and allowing for the low temperature operation in India's low speed environment. If you look at it, well, this is some test data from the generator work that we did. And the, as you can see here, the pressure is coming up. Unfortunately, we used probably the absolute worst uh, particulate filter at the time, but and this was a uh, data material, but the uh, lessons learned. But we, uh, we build up the pressure once again by closing the valve and then the release, opening of the valves and the release of the pressure itself. All of this is then done within the 2.3 seconds. This is all taken place on an indirect injected IDI tier zero, very old engine. Now, you ha we have to remember that just because it's an old engine doesn't mean that it's not has, they, these are used on $2 million RVs in the United States. So even the most discriminatory of uh, consumers still believe that this is a technology that's, that is applicable to even a $2 million motor coach. The, here is some data of the regenerations. This, once again, was a high-producing particulate matter uh, engine. It was producing at least a gram an hour, if not more. And you can see in equilibrium, we build up the pressure. We then regenerate it and then build and regenerate. Now, if you look at the time frame, this is literally the amount of time that it would take for the regeneration of a thermal system. 
our system was so fast that you, it didn't even pick up with the sampling rate of as we were running this over the hours. So you can see that our regeneration doesn't even <laughs> fit into that. Comparison, this will, we'll go through this rather quickly here, but the comparison of, between thermal and CPR. If you have the 10 to 30 minutes, we're looking at this as two to three seconds. 5% penalty, it would be more than that if you're looking at a very, an older mechanical solution. Notice, so we have no significant uh, fuel penalty. Dense urban and driving, we can achieve that because we're in between stoplights, we're, we're operating it. Operator training, the whole concept of having to teach people how to run a DPF is not something I believe that will be applicable to the Indian market. You know, it's one thing, everyone I've ever talked to that has a diesel engine in the US understands the technology. That is not, will not be a, a good idea in the Indian market, I believe. High temperature is an issue. When we were looking for the Volkswagen Jetta demonstration unit, I couldn't find one that didn't have a damaged particulate filter and black exhaust pipes already. The ash plugging, at the end of life, the ash, as we know, is more than the amount of particulate. We'll be removing an ongoing basis, which will take away a large amount of, of investment and expense for the Indian market. And the capability fitting it. That's really the only way to achieve uh, low emissions within the next decade. Overall, once again, with the vanadium system, we can say that, and the fast regeneration, that nearly every diesel engine that's on the market today, as long as it's got reasonable oil consumption, can be retrofitted and, be, and can achieve Euro 6 emissions. Urea injection, we're showing that by removing the DOC, that we can have it in the, just downstream of the turbo, or you could actually inject into the manifold, which of course would create some corrosion issues, which would have to be dealt with with better materials. But we'll see that this would make a much better solution for the low temperature market. Overall, the, uh, being able to put it close to it. This is actually some test data from the Volkswagen Jetta. And you can see here that this is just the DPF and light temperature. This was the DOC temperature and this was manifold. This is the red line is the vehicle speed. The X axis is time and the Y axis here is the temperature. So ultimately at 180 degrees second, 180 seconds, we were at a, to achieve the 180 degrees in this real world emissions. It was literally driving down the road uh, after a cold start. By going to the DOC, we can be able to reduce that down to 117 seconds from the start of the engine and reduce it by over a minute the amount of time that, it, that we could start injecting it with urea. Now, of course, there's a Linox trap in the Volkswagen Jetta, and we're just making the assumption here that this would be an SCR catalyzed system. Overall, if you look at it where you could start getting some good uh, NOx effectiveness at 150, you could, by putting it into the manifold, you would be able to have 250 degrees to do the hydrolysis of it, opening up the ability for the very low temperature, real NOx conversion in the India market, and low speed India market. This is the 2011 Volkswagen Jetta TDI that we have that we got in red just so that it would look fast, but it actually is fast. We've uh, modified it so that it was a 20% increase in horsepower and torque to be able to, and so it would be best in class acceleration. If you look at it, here is the, a part of this, the CPR uh, solution. We have the storage tank behind the fender here, we, and then the rest of the system. So we have the particulate filter, the lean knocks trap, the exhaust flapper valve that's already installed on there. By closing the valve, we then pressurize it as we were showing in the other cartoon. We then, uh, with our new system, we allow the system regenerates and breaks off transporting the particulate to the side. The, we then open the valve. We were taking control of it and then allowing it to release, which then reduces the pressure back to it. And then the rest of the system goes back to normal operation. Once again, this is 1.8 seconds for the, during this time. We once again increase the horsepower and torque by 20% by flashing the ECM. I was actually working uh, with, uh, and 
way of people that actually delete DPFs for <laughs> the solution portion of it. So it, it was uh, interesting to get them uh, involved in a different way. We have over 2,000 kilometers of driving without a active thermal regeneration because we basically told the system that it did not reflash the ECM to show that it didn't have an EC, uh, DPF installed. And uh, the testing is ongoing, so we won't be able to show any results here at this conference, but I'd be more than willing to, if, with interest, to be able to share some of that. Overall, we believe it's a fix for the T. Volkswagen Solutions. In summary, I appreciate your patience here is that in Euro 6 engines, like Dr. Sharma was showing, that a non-EGR vanadium-based SCR solution is a cost-effective approach, whether it's with the pulse re temperature or with CPR. Overall, the CPR is the only emissions reduction technology that we believe can meet all of India's requirements. In the real world emissions and achieving these with higher sulfur fuels will be very important. We're showing this as a B100. Uh, it could be any blend of because without having, without the post-injection, we don't have the issues of evaporation of the biodiesel diluting the oil. Overall, the low-cost engine of utilizing even a mechanical fuel-injected system and after treatment to achieve Euro 6, or, and for 6, and capable of retrofitting these vehicles. And thank you for the t your time. Uh, as chairman, I'm going to take the liberty to ask a question here, Brett. Uh, very nice presentation.